Clemson goes to Notre Dame this week. They hold the fourth spot in the playoffs. As we mentioned, all they've got to do is win and they're in. We all agree on that. Easier said than done. Clemson has been in some dog fights as of late. They survived the Syracuse game. Uh, I, Darian, I don't know that I was ever on a show with you after to talk about the quarterback quote unquote controversy that seems right. to have resolved itself now. Uh, but now you've got a big game on the road against a Notre Dame team that, quite frankly, I don't know what to believe of this team. They've been one yeah. of the more up and down teams. Whenever you think you know what they're going to do, they do the opposite. So huh. let's just let's just lead it up to this. Uh, do you think this is Clemson's toughest test that they've faced yet this season? I wouldn't say toughest test. Most unpredictable test, yes. Because like you said, I don't really know what you're going to get out of them. You look at their season, I mean, they – like UNC is not a fluke. UNC is 7-1 right now. No, they could – they easily could be an undefeated ACC team. If they, they, did, if they did lose to Notre Dame like week four. Then no, But also Notre Dame's lost. <laughs> they lost to Marshall, lost to Ohio State. They've lost to, to Stanford, which who is – Stanford's a 3-5 and five football team. And then they've won. They, all right, so they beat UNC, who's literally could be undefeated. And Drake May, if Drake May was coming back off the season, he would probably be in a Heisman race, be a top four candidate if he had if he if he runs this season back. And that kind of plays into the narrative. Um, and so, and they they beat a team. They pretty definitively they beat a Syracuse team who went into the valley and almost won that game. So it's like, I don't know if they're going to be the mighty Notre Dame, the mighty Irish. Are they going to be literally the worst team to show up and get boat raced? I don't know. Um, so I will say, I don't think it's the toughest opponent. I think it's the most unpredictable opponent Clemson's had. Um, they're going to Notre Dame. Marcus Freeman, like I said, is still on the ropes. Obviously, it's his first year, but just, man, that nobody would have pre predicted them to be like as bad as they were early in the season. And if you look at their schedule, I'm pred predicting they go seven and five, which is crazy in Notre Dame. I say they lose this game, they win the next two, and they use they lose the USC. Personally, I think they lose the Southern Cal. Um, but if I'm Marcus Freeman, the only narrative I can spin is that, that we just beat a Syracuse team that almost went to the Valley and won that game, and forced them to make a quarterback change, and they're coming here to our house. That's the only ammunition I got <laughs> to get of my guys. <laughs> and you can probably they, he he can probably say the same thing about Clemson, like hey. This team has gotten through a lot of games, um, barely got the Wake Forest, uh, barely got to the Syracuse game. Thank God I was at that game, and I was sitting up there in the stands, and I'm just crossing my fingers, bro. I'm like, please don't let this be the game. Don't let this – don't let Syracuse come here. Don't let this be the game. Reminds me of 2018 with Chase Bryce. Don't let this be the game, bro. So, um, I don't know. Like, I think Notre Dame's probably one of the biggest question marks in college football because they, they have the – they show the marks of pride of the of like what we know to be true, but be know to be true by Notre Dame where they're like a, a good program. They also just lose to Marshall. It's like like what the hell are we doing here? Yeah. I don't know. So we'll see. I think it's gonna be a, it's gonna be a great game. I think they have a great atmosphere. I think a lot a lot of things can play into it. But I see Clemson. Here's here's my prediction. All right, let's think. Let's talk about this on field as well. Let's talk about the first time BJ played at Notre Dame. And all that's transpired to this game. Because if you would have told me in 2020, COVID year, after DJ just put up the, he, I think he broke the passing record, if I'm not mistaken. He had the most yards for any away passer in Notre Dame history 420, 21 yards. Like that game was crazy. That he would, <laughs> off becoming a Heisman contender, tank, come back the week before he, the, before he plays his game, get benched. And then get named back the starter. And now he's in Notre Dame. And so I just think that's a crazy story for him personally. What's well, all transpired. So I would love to see him go be that guy again. After coming off this, this like kind of controversial little, little moment of getting benched for Kay, for Kay to come in and give us a spark. I love to see him go back to Notre Dame and have a full sucker moment and just go crazy. That's what I want to see. Will we see that? We'll see. I don't know. But that's all I want to see. You think we're going to see that hack? Um, no, I think <laughs> Notre Dame. Well, no, no, no. I think, no, I think for him. Yeah. I think he'll play fine. 
I think the the bigger thing that I'm watching is Notre Dame's going to have to figure out a way how to throw the football because that's the weakest part of this Clemson team. Right. If they're going to try to go at this front seven, I think that's a really tough task, especially if they can just pin their ears back and say, you know, hey, we, they got to establish the run game for anything to happen. We're going to pin our ears back and play aggressive as shit and, and beat the hell out of their their offensive line and make some plays in the backfield, which they can do. I think that's good. I think that's a tough task for Notre Dame. <clears throat> I'll say this. Um, I think Clemson has a really unpredictable opponent this week, but I think it's more predictable when you dive into that stuff like I just did. I think a more unpredictable opponent is the team they're playing next week in Louisville. And I also think that the South Carolina game at the end of the year is going to be no cakewalk. So I'm, I'm, for for Clemson, I'm more focused on those two games, two of the last three, than this one. I think this one, the matchups bode well for the uh, for the Clemson Tigers. Um, and and I, I would love to see that as well, D. Like, I'd love to see DJ go up there and, and everything kind of come full circle and him light it up and get some confidence going into this because he's going to need to play well, uh, like I said, at least two of the last three games here. During the stretch, I think he's definitely got to find his groove because – you look at all the top teams, and this is one of the things I was explaining to somebody with Clemson in, like, quarterback situation. Every top team is is playing the way they are because of their quarterback. Tennessee, if Hendon Hooker is not good, Tennessee's not good. If C.J. Stroud's not good, they're not good. Michigan's the only question mark because Michigan's got Blake Corum. But everybody else, George, I think Stetson Bennett is different. Of a, he, it's different with style of play. If he has the quarterback, he's still what makes Georgia who they are. Like, he, he's just – he's crafty. It makes plays. And so I just – and then you look at TCU with Dunnigan. You look at Bryce Young, Alabama. So if Clemson – because I, I would hate to see it just get in the playoffs and get smacked. You know what I'm saying? Like if we're going to be a con- true contender – hey, 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 I see your face. If we're going to be a true contender, DJ's got DJ's got to play well. He really does. And so I want to see him kind of have a – like a, I want to see him finish strong. Hack, we got to defend the face now. I mean no. – <laughs> It just goes back to what I said. I think I think the you know, I think the four best teams could be in two conferences. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> okay. Um. Uh, so on that note, then Hack, because th- that leads into the question I was going to spin back at you: Is Clemson mm-hmm. the most vulnerable of the teams that are in the top four right now? Because even if we're saying there's a level between maybe how good they are as a football team, complete on both sides of the ball, and Georgia and Tennessee and Ohio state. I think we've seen those teams be extremely vulnerable this season. We saw Georgia almost lose to Missouri. We saw them in a battle with Kent state as crazy as that is. And Tennessee, to your point, the pick game, like that was almost a loss. Clemson survived the Syracuse game. And you know, this is football. Like every team's going to have tests game. Survive the way for us. Are they the most vulnerable of the top four now for the remainder of the season? Because their schedule has sort of opened up. If they get through this game, I know you're worried about Louisville, but they got yeah, through the yeah. biggest test in that conference. Yeah, right. I mean, like I said, we'll see. Um, you know, I, I just, again, this is not uh, Clemson of old in terms of top to bottom what they've had. It's just not. They got some good players. I think Will Shipley is a game is a game breaker. Um, I, like I said, I just very rare to not really know a receiver in that room on a national level. There's not one, um, you know, it's just, it just, they don't, they don't separate the way that they traditionally do. You see DJ, DJ's had to make a lot of tough foot throws all year. I mean, tight window throws the shit I talk about why I love Aiden O'Connell so much. DJ's had to do it consistently. And you see a guy who's got all this talent and who was used to throwing to guys who were wide, wide the fuck open when he first started playing. And now he doesn't have it and he struggles. It's just tough. It's a tough thing to do. And that's the adjustment that you have to make at our position when you go to the next level. And that's why I go back to the argument that you just brought up again previously from a few weeks ago about why it started Aiden (laughs) O'Connell over the other guys. But anyway, um, bringing it back. I, uh, I, you know, I just I just don't see it with the Clemson team. I've watched enough of them because, again, I, I got a brother that played baseball there. I, I, you know, hey, I got a little I, I got I got to support some purple and orange every once in a while. I got I got some of the shit up in my closet. You know, I wear it every once in a while around my house. Hey, um, it's, good, it's good to hear you say that, bro. Right, yeah, you heart. know, so so I sit there and I watch it. And I, you know, I, I pay attention. Um, 
but uh, I just again, like I said, I don't see it. Okay. Yeah, I would. I would say, it. yeah, vulnerable as far as the schedule. No, vulnerable is the talent or like how good we are. Maybe. Um, I think 